It's now a waiting game for the country as the National Union of Electricity employees have allowed two weeks window for the federal government and other relevant authorities to address their long-standing grievances or prepare to be in darkness for as long as it takes. How we all got to this point where we now wait with bated breath for the outcome of negotiations among parties is what we intend to explore on this episode of Special Report. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jeffrey Uzongo. Wednesday, August the 17th, 2022. Nigerians experienced blackout for hours because for the seventh time this year, something went wrong at the national grid. But this time, it was far from the usual technical reasons. It was actually man-made. The workers who were meant to keep it on shut it down and they had their reasons. Remember that the minister was on a convey the meeting about three years ago when we had picketing of TCN. He summoned all the stakeholders and we had an agreement. And that agreement, as I speak to you, has not been implemented. The same minister is saying what you cannot, you are unable to effect within over two to three years. You are saying give us two weeks to effect it. Where is the minister? Apart from that later, we have not seen the minister. He has not invited us for talks. What are some of those critical... Uh, yeah, the, 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 the issues are so many, but there are three that are critical. The first one is stigmatization of PSN, former PSN workers. There was a circular from the head of service saying that once you work in PSN, you can no longer work in any, in, any, in any sector, in the power sector. The implication to that is that some work for two years in PSN, some even a year, others 10, others 20, but they were paid off based on the number of years you worked. Now that circular is saying that even if you have worked for five years, you can no longer work in the public sector, in any way in the power sector. And we are challenging that. The second issue is our 16 months pay, which has been lingering for almost seven years or over. And um, we had an agreement that the market operator will pay. Uh, last week or there about, they told us they don't have the money to pay, and we are not going to pay. The other issue is that the board of TCN that was recently constituted have abandoned the condition of service and their career path and begin to import issues as if they are operating on air. There are policies on ground. We have a condition of service which we are signatory to. You can't change it overnight. If you want to operate outside the condition of service, then call for a review. If it is reviewed, we all understand. It's our guiding principle. And that is why, that's the three major reasons why we are out. With the expiration of an ultimatum and appeals to the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, and the federal government to meet their demands on Tuesday, August the 16th, 2022, Members of the National Union of Electricity Employees, NUER, resumed at the entrance of the TCN headquarters in Abuja, picketing the office. For the workers, this was a warning shot before a showdown to finally down tools. Uh, this is a journey that began since 2013 and as of 2019 uh, the, the in two in-house union gathered 
with the federal government, which the Minister of State actually spearheaded. And there and then agreement was held, signed by both parties, agreeing in totality that this payment is going to be implemented. And uh, we believe the Minister of State, in his own magnanimous state, took this decision on behalf of the senior minister. And court said demand that, uh, having stood in for him, that that agreement ought to have been, you know, uh, dealt with up to now. But to tell you that we are a peaceful organization, the two in-house union has been peaceful. You can imagine an agreement that took place since 2019. And we waited 2020, 21, this is 22. We are heading to 2023. And uh, nobody is saying anything about it. And our people are suffering. Some of, it wasn't all of us that we are lucky to have been you know, back to the job. Some of them, some of us that were disengaged are still whiling away there, suffering with their family. And this particular payment is part of their payment component. And they decide to treat it with all sense of disregard. So on this note, uh, we have always been nice and, uh, you know, uh, useful when it comes to giving consideration. If they do the right thing by calling a meeting for us to reach a truce. The National Secretary of the Boat Union will listen to them and uh, uh, make sure that uh, whatever needs to be done is done. That is if they yield to our advice. Remember three things that we are presented to them. And those three things is very, very serious to us. Because like they said, an injury for one is an injury for all. So we can't sit down here and allow people who pass through this structure whom this stru structure grew, you know, groomed up. They are now senators. They are now ministers. They are now different kind, PAMSEC and whatever. It is this structure they followed. Now they have climbed the Iroko with the ladder. They are cutting the ladder down. That is exactly what they are doing. By virtue of bringing a new modus for the promotion of PSEN staff, when already it has been enshrined by the condition of service and career paths, that once you are a, G, a, a PM, that going to AGM is automatic, dependable upon vacancy uh, availability. But now they are making it to look like whoever they give, we take. Because if they say everybody should come, that means it's only the person that they tell that passed. You won't see your paper and you won't see it. But the question is that that is not our process and procedure. So we are saying no to it. Let's go back to status quo. And that is what we are asking for. And indeed, following through with their threat, the next day, the electricity union workers shut down the national grid, continued their protests and strike across the country. Strike action by workers predates our independence as a nation. It's an avenue employees use to exert pressure on their employers to accede to their demands. Mostly undertaken by labor unions, strike is usually reserved as a last weapon during negotiations between management or government and the union, which may occur just before or immediately after the negotiation deadlocks. Strike is an ancient tool with modern masters in civil service. The International Labour Organization argues that the right to strike is one of the potent means open to workers for the promotion, protection and preservation of their economic and social interests within and outside the workplace. So what are the latest issues? The leadership of the Electricity Union Workers expatiates. Yeah, there are three main issues among others. One is the promotion issue. Who the TCA can handle with the board? We don't have problem with that. The second one is the issue of uh, the uh, balance of entitlement of PSEN uh, workers. You know, and an agreement was reached in this direction by 2019. And the Minister of State, who has written to us now, 
he signed that same agreement, and he had between 2019 to 2022 to have addressed it. And that agreement gave the TCN branch of the market operator the matching order to pay. And between 2019 to date, they didn't pay. And the last issue, anyway, is the issue that came up from a, a circular from the head of service that contravened the Power Sector Act. And we have been writing the head of service in the last six months for clarification on the contents of uh, his or her circular. And we didn't even receive any acknowledgement of our letters. So those are the three issues. The Minister of State can't speak for the head of service on in this regard, never. But the Minister of State, up to this moment, should equally excuse himself if he signed that agreement on behalf of government and failed to implement it. So these are the issues. You know, when you write President Buhari, unless any of the ministers or people under him write you back on his behalf, they, their competence in handling such issues may be in doubt. The Secretary General of the Union, Mr. Joe Ajero, also notes that the federal government, CCN, and the head of service of the Federation all have a role to play to stave off an indefinite action. Ordinarily, in matters like this, you know, meetings are held or letters are, you know, sent to the people complaining that this is the situation. So we wrote about three letters for clarification. Our letters didn't start with ultimatum. Of course, we are too deep for that. We understand more than that. And when it was not forthcoming, we gave the first ultimatum, which expired. This ultimatum we are trying to carry, that, carry out now has expired in the last one month. And we have been appealing. We have met with big, with, sorry, we have met with uh, DC and Transmission Company of Nigeria, and they told us it's beyond their powers, clearly, in two separate meetings. And we pleaded with them, please, can you help us reach out to the people who is within their powers? And up to now, nothing has happened. So whatever intervention, there is no intervention could not come through responding to the issues raised if you don't want to see the face of the people concerned. Or, you know, inviting the people for a meeting or making, making a, you know, a time out to address the issues. And it ends there, just at the level of grievance, not dispute. If I explains on the possible way out. Nobody here that understands, you know, power relations will tell you that uh, when a head of service issues a circular, a minister of state, you know, will call for two weeks. Or when a minister of state signs agreement by himself, after three years, he will call for two weeks. If in the first place seven years was not enough and there was a strike action which it attracted the attention of the National Assembly, and after three years again, it's not addressed. We equally urge him, you know, to tell us whether he can address issues raised by the minister, raised by the um, head of service of the Federation on this issue, or whether he has the mandate of the head of, head of service to address this issue on her or his behalf. And he didn't get back to us up to this moment. And back on the streets, members of the National Union of Electricity Employees are accusing the federal government of failing to address staff welfare issues as they pick at the headquarters of the Transmission Company of Nigeria in Abuja. Singing solidarity songs, members of the union occupy the entrance of TCN to press home their demands. The chairman of the FCT chapter of the union and others comment on why they took the action. We have endured enough, you can understand with me, since 2019 to date. It's quite three good years that we have sat down, keeping quiet, realizing the fact that, yes, the country is undergoing a whole lot of issues. And that is why we felt, given this long rope, at least somebody somewhere should have thought it wise to make a wise decision by making sure these things are taken care of. But we can see nobody cares about us. So we have to take our destiny by our own hands. We met the government in 2013 and we advised them not to privatize the discourse. They refused, and we allowed it be. Today, Disco is dead. Only bank are running the place as they like. After here, we will deal with them. Now, not too long ago, this board was inaugurated. 
like other, other areas. We didn't, we didn't reject it, even though the ministry did not invite the labor to witness the inauguration. After that, we wrote a letter to the Minister of Power, expressing our dissatisfaction for the way the board was inaugurated without labor, with stakeholders like us being a witness to inauguration. It, it will interest you to note that as, as, as I speak, the ministry has never replied that letter to today. And again, they are planning the board that was, uh, was inaugurated, so to say, with men and women that are not professionals, choose to run the, the TCN as a full-time employment. It's never done anywhere. We all know how board operates. They meet quarterly, they make policies for management of any, any parastatus of ministries to implement and they supervise. But rather, what the board is doing now, they resume here every day, they ask for documents to inv investigating the management of TCN, intimidate the management of TCN, tampering with our condition of service, which we agreed in 2016 and amended in 2020. It is not acceptable to us. I will not be acceptable. They should operate as a board. When they finish, they, when they meet quarterly, they make their policy and give to management to implement, and they play a supervisory role. That is one. Their colleagues in Kaduna State have also withdrawn their services at the Kaduna Regional Headquarters of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, in line with the directive of the union's national leadership. The TCN Kaduna Regional Station covers four northwest states of Kaduna, Kebi, Sokoto, and Zamfara. During the picketing of the Mondo TCN Station in Kaduna, the state capital, officials of the union shut down operations and thereafter forced workers out of the company's premises. They vowed not to resume work until all their demands are met by the federal government. Work at the Benin region of the TCN Edo State was also put on hold on Wednesday as the union leaders were on ground to ensure compliance with the directive regarding the strike action. Some of the union's representatives maintain that the action would continue until a resolution is reached or further directives are given by the national body. Um, I want to assure, assure, assure you that there's full, full compliance in the two states and we remain here until our demands are met. We are doing this in solidarity with uh, the leadership of the union to ensure that our demands, the workers' uh, welfare, and not compromise. So however, it is expected that uh, the government, in their own wisdom, we decide to come out with a truce with the, with the leadership of the union to ensure that this uh, uh, action does not uh, linger on. So we, are, we have ensured that all our members are out, are not going to office today, they are all outside. So you will know what will happen by the time the people who are mining the electricity are not there and eventually it will gradually go down. But we feel that at least if we not get to that, more management in the we government will come out and see how they can attend to all these uh, issues. The Benin region of the TCN controls power supply to Edo and Delta states. Some residents of Benin City appealed to the federal government to promptly address the issues that led to the strike to avoid a total blackout for an indefinite period of time. I plead that the government should please listen to them and do the needful so that it will not affect the poor masses. The only thing the government can give to we, the poor masses, is just electricity. That's lights, water, and a good hospital. So if they cannot do it, if they cannot give it to us, it is not uh, fair because which means they don't have us in their mind. So I appeal to them that they should please listen to these uh, uh, electricity people they should do the needful so that there will be light. There should, not be, there should be no total blackout in the country. It will affect business. It will affect so many things. So, so please, then, government, uh, I beg, you push, just help us. Breakdown of light is not, it's not even what we even want to have now. 
by this time they just say no light power off everywhere it's terrible please it should not happen no. Also, the residents of Akure, the Ondo State Capital, have been reacting to the nationwide strike by electricity workers. <laughs> Some who spoke to Channel's television lament the effect the strike will have on them and their businesses. They appeal to both the government and the workers to dialogue to avert a national crisis. Uh, for uh, Nepal to go on strike, they have the, the right to go on, uh, to go on strike. But what I believe that if the NEPA, I mean the management and the, the federal government can sit on the round table and discuss it and discuss about the problem and find a solution for the problem, I think that would be better. But if the federal government did not respond, well, the NEPA staff can go on strike if they don't comp comply. As we are seeing it today, federal government has not performed well. We are not happy. We embassies, we are not happy about the federal government. See now, ASU is on strike. Nepal people now, they want, they want to go on strike again. And the other time, they have money, 100 million to donate for election. And now to, they don't have money to pay for ASU. And now they don't have money to pay for Nepal. So we are not happy for federal government at all. This government is not, uh, it's not uh, we are not happy about this government. We are not happy. Electricity workers also shut down the Uyo workstation of the Transmission Company of Nigeria in line with the directive of the National Secretariat of the Union. When Channel's television visited the center located at Afo Bay, the entrance to the facility was firmly locked from outside with no one inside. A notice of strike was seen on the gate. Some residents of Uyo who spoke to Channel's television appealed to the staff of TCN and their employers to work out a quick resolution of the issues involved. They know what they're supposed to do. I think they should do what is right. And uh, if they're going on strike, we we'll make government to listen to them so that, I mean, the condition of lights in uh, Uyo should improve. I mean, they should do it. If the if uh, not going to the strike, if going to the strike will cause more damages, I mean they should still look into it. That's my advice to them. And at the state house, the minister who was himself caught in the web has this to say: Under the general secretary uh, uh, Joe Joe Ajero, they are working since uh, trying to discuss the the matters. It is not uh, that. Uh, uh, Kaduna Disco is on strike, but uh, they are trying to switch off the electricity uh, due to uh, the warning strike that they have been uh, undertaking since yesterday. In fact, we have not been able to go into our offices. The issues they have is not uh, particularly on uh, and having something to do with us, but together with uh, something to do with employment issues, with the head of service, and uh, so that's the reason why they are now having the discussions. While keeping faith with the government, the leadership of the National Union of Electricity Employees directed its members to return to work eight hours into the strike. They gave the government two weeks to walk the talk to avoid another shutdown. The issues that we had, I thank the Honorable Minister and uh, the Minister of State for Power for their maturity in handling these issues that we brought up. Yes, these issues could have been tackled earlier on if uh, there was the rightful communication with all parties. But well, as we have said, um, we've been given two weeks uh, to wish to report back to the, uh, the full house um, where we assure the nation that uh, such crisis will be nipped in the board before it uh, escalates. As we await the outcome of negotiation between the Electricity Workers Union and the federal government in the next two weeks, some endemic issues within the power sector must be addressed, especially as it has to do with alleged corruption, sabotage, poor maintenance of power infrastructure, 
the government is expected to have an honest conversation with the union based on measurable, achievable timelines to avoid stretching an already overstressed system and possibly stop a looming down. And that's it on this episode of the program. Thanks for your time and, of course, your usual company. I'm Jeffrey Uzonga.